What's up, gifted family? Welcome to another episode of the show that is the GP YouTube. Just a reminder that if you support what we do here, make sure to go over to giftedperformance.com and sign up for our automated coaching service. For only a dollar a day, you'll get access to 15 highly customized training programs, a macronutrient calculator, our meal planning feature that lets you build and save meals based on your macros, as well as access to our private Facebook group. All subscriptions help us in continuing to put out great content to get you to your fitness goals. Thanks for stopping by, and without any further delay, let's get into today's video. Enjoy. And here we are back at it again. Another episode of the Athlete Diaries. For some reason, he's extremely close to his camera today. His name is Cameron Cheek. Cam, how you doing today? Oh, my, beautiful. I'm good. Great to hear. Great to hear. And a new face, but not a new face to gift to performance. Miranda, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Miranda coming from sunny California. Is it sunny in California right now? Oh, hell yeah. And steaming hot. Oh, no, it's beautiful. There's a breeze. It's nice and cool in the shade. It's, it's never that weather. When is when have you ever asked someone that lives in California, how's the weather? And they're like, oh, it's terrible. It's <laughs> off. It's beautiful. The birds are chirping. <laughs> they it's really beautiful are. beautiful today, but we're on our third earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> Only the second, actually, and one fire, so we're good. All right, so what we are going to talk about today is a little bit of Miranda's 2019 prep that ended with an NPC bikini national qualification, and she did it against all odds, according to most people, utilizing, her shirt has already, spoiler alert right there, has showed us, using a completely vegan diet. So Miranda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us the Miranda story, kind of qualifications, yeah. maybe education certification, and then we'll kind of go into what drove you to or what kind of attracted you to like a vegan lifestyle. Cool, yeah, so I also am a, um, a fitness coach uh, and a nutrition coach. I have been in the fitness industry for about six years now, six-ish years, time flies. Um, I previously worked management for a couple of different companies um, like LA Fitness, Orange Theory Fitness, um, and with a smaller company, Metabolic Fitness as well. Um, I've just kind of dabbled with online training one-on-one. -on -one. So I have like various, I guess, um, realms of uh, experience in that sense. Um, so pretty much I'm a nationally, um, like you said, nationally certified well, I can't talk. Nationally qualified bikini competitor. Um, I've only done the two shows there. I get nervous. You make me nervous because I feel like you're going to come at me with something and catch me off guard. So I'm like having walls up over here. You just won't. Yo, he will. You know, Ryan. I've known him <laughs> since 2015. So, yeah, spoiler alert, we've worked together for about five years. Um, so we've had some background with each other before going into this uh, this prep last year. But um, I have my NASM certified personal training certification. I also am a corrective exercise specialist. I have a precision nutrition certification as well, uh, which is all really, really good. I highly recommend that to any fellow trainers out there. Um, yeah, that's. I also have an associate's degree that no one cares about in general studies. So that's freaking fabulous. $15,000 in the hole for that. <laughs> You're a college grad though. Uh, I hear oh, that that means something. Yeah. Um, so what are, what are kind of some of your interests? If you had to say like, what was your, what's your like niche in terms of the clients that you like to work with the most? Is it female, general fitness? Who, who do you like to work with the most? Yeah. So I, I don't really have much of a preference. I feel like I have like more of a demographic that finds me. It tends to be women that are looking to get started on their fitness journey, looking for like some weight loss. Um, over the past couple of years specifically, it kind of has transformed more so for women who are looking to build muscle and kind of build a physique now that there is less of a stigma about lifting heavy and there's more of an awareness about, you know, how lifting is good for your body, which is really cool. Um, I actually want to, spoiler alert as well, a little secret here, I kind of want to transition into potentially contest prep 
um, for women bikini competitors in the next upcoming couple of years as well. Um, I really like working with athletes that already have the drive, that have already overcome a lot of, um, I guess, like basic baby steps when it comes to their fitness journey and just kind of help be a mentor and take them to that next level. And Miranda is quite good with that. I've, I had to say so myself. She had a, Thanks. I would say probably the best mentor in the world in this process to teach her. You know, yours truly. Just kidding. But she does Pretty know good her mentor. stuff. She's she's one that you can kind of just I can throw ma- we can throw macros and training together as a team. Really collaborative effort. She's not one that kind of just sits back and says, you know, just give me something to do and I'll follow it. She's always asking questions, always wants to know the reasoning as to why we do things, which is, which is a really good client to have it. It, as someone like that transitions into coaching, they end up being a a really good coach as well. Very inquisitive, I would say, but let's talk. So let's talk vegan. Let's talk vegetarianism. Kind of what drove you to that? Why, why, why? Yeah. Do that. Let's do it. So growing up, we're going to go way back to when I was a small child. I didn't really like meat. Like my mom would make pork chops and I would just sit there for hours as she yelled at me to finish my food. And I would just try to like hide it in my napkin, feed it to the dog. Like I just had weird, like, I guess, issues with like meat, things like that. Um, when I was like 18, I moved out of the house and I went down to like Disney World to do my internship. That's when I stopped like drinking milk. I stopped eating pork. Because I was on my own, I just didn't buy it for myself. I wasn't consuming it, but I was still eating various like chicken, turkey, eggs, things like that. Um, And especially as I got into lifting, I thought, you know, as a bodybuilder, you know, bro diet, I need these egg whites, I need all this chicken and turkey. And it, I just never really liked it. It got to a point where I couldn't touch it. I couldn't cook it. I would have my husband cook everything. Like I just was so grossed out by it. And I had actually tried going vegan. This is kind of a funny story. I lasted a month. I lived off of tempeh. Have you ever Mm. had tempeh? I have not, and I never will. I'm a vegan, (laughs) and I will tell you that, okay, unless it's properly prepared, which a lot of restaurants can do great, tempeh freaking sucks. I was so bloated and, like, gassy, and it hurt. It was disgusting. I was obviously cooking it wrong as well, so I lived off of tempeh for a month, cooked incorrectly, and then I transitioned back into, like, my normal diet. Um, And then this is going to sound kind of crazy, but... I'm a vegan. I'm already crazy. Y'all know. Um, so about three years ago, I was like just having a, a conversation with my dog um, and I was looking into his eyes. Yeah, this sounds really crazy. And he was just staring at me with those big, beautiful brown eyes. And I just felt like his emotions. You know what I mean? Like he's so you guys have dogs, right, Cam? Dog person? Yeah, but oh. my dog just makes me feel dumb. If I were to try, <laughs> if I were okay. to try and get the same wavelength with her, I'd, I'd crush my, <laughs> any dreams that I had. <laughs> Well, Ryan, you're really close with your dogs. Like, you know how smart they are. They're they're just so, they're amazing. And I was like looking into his eyes and I was like, this this being, you know, has a, a soul. He has feelings. He's so like responsive and perceptive to my feelings. Yeah, see? And then I just felt like this immense guilt. And I literally just had like this moment where I was like, F it. I am not, I'm not eating any more meat ever again. And it was crazy because my husband, like, I never pressured him. I never even had a conversation with him about it. I just told him like, hey, honey. I'm done eating meat. And he looked at me and he goes, me too. And we have not eaten meat since. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Cam, you said you don't know what tempeh is. Take an absolute wild shot in the dark what you think it is. I don't I don't know. I mean, I would think it would be like somewhere along, along the lines of like tofu. Like I imagine it was like just some like paste. It pretty much looks like a, a block of soybeans that a kindergartner like glued together and then squished that's pretty much okay. what it looks like so i threw the question to cam because like i also didn't know exactly what it was and then i was gonna wait for miranda to answer and be like duh cam you idiot <laughs> soybeans. I had a, like i had an inkling that it was soybeans because like most vegetarian products are like soybean kind of based yeah uh, but quick pop quiz do you know why they use soybean why it's so popular? Oh no, I like dirt cheap. Oh, oh yeah, dirt dirt cheap. Cheap. wheat, corn, soy. Yeah, yep. over yeah. here in Georgia, where I grew up, yeah, they would have they do. I guess it's like crop rotation, and like one season they do cotton, and other soy mm-hmm. beans, and there's just fields and fields of it. Just so many. <laughs> so I would, I would assume the abundance of it is 
There, there's a high abundance of it. Yeah. There you go. We're all learning something today. But let's go ahead. Let's transition into kind of the competitive season now. So, where kind of where did we start? What was our what was our time frame here? I, if my memory serves me, and it rarely does, I think Marin <laughs> reached out somewhere around November of 2018. I think he reached out and said, "Hey, kind of let's let's link back up. Let's get serious. Let's start training. Let's do nutrition and let's try and compete somewhere summer of next year, 2019." Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I made some notes because my memory is pretty pretty bad as well. Um, so again, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Like I said earlier, Ryan and I had been working together since 2015, so we had a really solid foundation like on and off in regards to muscle building, strength training, things like that. It wasn't like I just jumped into prep with him. Um, And anyone watching, I really encourage you to work with a coach prior, and I'm sure Ryan has said this, prior to doing a prep so you can really build the foundation, get a good connection and rapport with your coach. Um, Because if you can't communicate with them, if you guys are not on the same page, like you are not going to have a successful prep. Um, So anyways... I just went on a tangent. Um, Yeah, I had reached out to you back in like November 2018, and we had started a prep that um, we didn't go through with because I had gotten a job promotion, and I had chosen to take um, my life priorities over a very expensive hobby priority. Um, Yeah, so then um, skipping ahead a little bit. Are you okay if I skip ahead? Yeah, skip. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, fast forward to about like a year later, November 2, no, not a year later. Wow, I'm so bad at this. Yeah, so November 2018, I reached out. I was like at my heaviest weight in a while. I'm so bad at this. Oh my God. Don't ever quote me on anything unless I cite my sources. I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there right now, too. Okay. But, anyways, we'll have, yeah. We'll have, you, we'll have you post a work cited after this. <laughs> I need a work cited. I'm very like, I have it. It makes sense in my head. It's just like hard to put together into words. But, um, yeah, so I think we started our official prep, though. February 2019. Yeah. So it was November 2018. I sent you that picture of me in my coach shirt and I was like, whoa, like I look like I have no arm definition. I feel like a whale. Like it's really time to like get my butt into gear. Um, So that's when I had started to lose a little bit of weight on on my own in that little gap between December and February um, to do like a pre-prep just to make sure I could get back on track and really commit to working with you for a prep. So I was tracking my food, I was hitting my workouts and I had a pretty good routine down. So then February, 2019, oh look, there's a note here. Yep, at at about 127 pounds, that's when we started. Yep. Yeah. So one thing, so a lot of, and Cam, maybe you can, you can speak to this as well, but a lot of times when coaches get a new client, that's kind of and and Miranda said this herself, she was far from a whale. Let's go ahead and let's just throw out there. Now you were far from a whale, whale. felt like a whale, but you came from a position where you had been eating plenty. You had been nursing some injuries. You had gained some weight, but what you weren't dealing with was any sort of dietary fatigue no food focus, your psychology was in a great position, you didn't have any of those injuries, and you were ready to go. Mm -hmm. Cam, have you seen anything where maybe you've had clients come to you that were stuck in a dieting state and they were like, hey, listen, let's let's get right into a prep and and maybe what are some of the the issues that you run into with people like that? Man, I feel like a, a majority of clientele that come in are ones that have not had success dieting but have been attempting to. Mm-hmm. And then reach out to me for wanting me to continue their dieting and hope that I can like unlock some magical lock and key to what they've been trying to do. And uh, I, I don't want to say that there's really been, there's been maybe one or two clients that I've worked with where they have been dieting and it was just not for so long and not too steep of a deficit for that duration that I was able to be like, okay, cool. Like I can work with this, you know, let's pull up near maintenance for like a week or two just to kind of just relax, get in a groove, make sure you're just every like logging everything down in the sheets correctly. And then we can actually focus on pretty much getting into a deficit and starting to, you know, pull your body fat down and work towards your goals. But rarely would I, and that's for a mini cut or just like a general lifestyle person, rarely would I, do that for someone in a contest pro. And Miranda can actually speak to this. You can kind of continue on Mm -hmm. what kind of happened in those early periods of prep, like with all the success you had early on. Oh, we lost a lot of weight pretty quick when we got moving. And it was like, my calories were pretty high. I had high energy. I was lifting like 
you know, some heavy weight. I was hitting PRs. Side note, I actually hit some pretty nice PRs, like pretty much all the way up to show day, which was pretty awesome. If you have a really good coach, you can do that. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because on the on the flip side too, that was like my client perspective. Um, also being a coach myself, building off of what Cam said, um, I've had people come to me, same thing. Their calories are super low. They've been trying and failing to diet. They think the answer is just a slash the calories, be in a crazy deficit. And when they come to you, they think that you're going to put them in more of a deficit. They don't understand the importance of rebuilding that metabolism back up because if your calories are already so low, you're not going to have anywhere to go. It, maybe you can, but it's not going to be a healthy or comfortable place. Um, so flipping back now to a client perspective, it was really great that um, when I came to you, like you said, I was eating a lot um, and I was training pretty heavy. We were able to keep our calories pretty high for the majority of prep and see great progress. And had I come to you with lower calories, I probably, A, would have looked like shit, B, been really tired, and C, stalled a lot, so... Yeah, I think if my memory serves me correctly, I think that you were still, you were losing about a pound a week. We were heading down towards like sub 120 and your calories were still 1,600, 1,700 calories average for the week throughout the seven yeah. day. And I'm five foot three. Like that's a good chunk of calories for me. And like you, you pretty much were doing exactly what I would tell somebody if they were to say like, hey, you know, I can't afford coaching yet but I want to start a prep in two to three months. What should I do from now until then? And you pretty much set yourself up in the most ideal spot, you know, for both of your success and making sure everything was as optimal and efficient as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of success, what were the, what were the shows that you hit that season? And then what, what were the placements there? So the first show I did was on June 22nd. It was the West Coast Classic, which is a huge show in Southern California, in Riverside, California. That show was so much fun. Um, I placed fifth, so I did place um, in the like the open class, and then I got second in Novus. Um, Novus, Novus. I say that weird, don't I? Now's the time to correct me. You can go either way with it. Tomato, tomato. But um, anyways, yeah. So that was. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then four weeks later, so we had a super quick turnaround um, in our season. I think it was July 20th. It was a muscle contest show in Culver City, um, which is pretty much Los Angeles. I actually placed first in Open and first in Novus. Um, the funny thing about that, too, another little tangent. Ryan can probably attest to this. I had so many like panic attacks and moments in those four weeks thinking I was not ready. I almost quit. I almost pulled out. I asked him 100 times if I should maybe pick another show, did not think I was ready, and even had the flu during peak week, and I still ended up in first in both of those. So prep goggles can be a bitch. Ryan's yeah, it was four weeks. <laughs> and I think that, I think a lot of people after that first show where maybe they didn't, because I, I know that Miranda, you went into that first show and we, we wanted to get first place. We wanted to win the overall. That's that's why we prep for shows. So oh, like yeah. a fifth place and a second place, that's good for a first show, but it was still it was still far short of where we wanted to be in terms of uh, our dream placement. And yeah. what I really appreciated about you as a client was that we kind of sat down after that and we said, all right, what's the plan moving forward? What do we actually need to improve? And you were very cognizant of, all right, here's the areas where I need to improve. I need to get more conditioned here. We need to be more aggressive with the peak protocol. And these are suggestions coming from you. This isn't like me telling you what to do. This was you relaying this to me. So that amount of insight really made my job easy. And then we were able to just lay out a, a concise plan. We're going to push a couple more pounds of fat loss, be a bit more aggressive with the peak and mm -hmm. boom, ended up in, in, with two first place trophies. So yeah, kudos, very, very, very well Thanks. done job. By you, it was, a, it was a good team effort. Great so, team effort, yeah, you were awesome. Definitely, just some just some general questions, kind of about yeah. the prep process as a whole for for maybe some some people that are watching this who are potential clients who are thinking about doing their first prep. Maybe what were some of the the easiest and the hardest parts of the contest prep for you as a first timer? Yeah, I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. I'm gonna put you on the spot. What do you think that my easiest part was? I'm curious, as my coach. Um, oh man, easiest part for you. Or hardest. So easiest part for you was probably the lifting. I That's think what that I, had. I think yeah. that you're ER. perfect. I think that you're. I think that you're very. You're very strength training focused. You like to. You like to lift the heavy weights. You like to get in there and, and clang and bang. 
um, the hardest part for you was probably oh, won't. Well, no, no, I don't think it was posing. I think Miranda likes posing. You like posing, right? Oh, I love right? posing. I want to be a Perfect. posing coach right, eventually good, too. Good. Yeah. Um, I think that the hardest part for you was probably when we started hitting those sticking points and we had to rev up cardio. Pretty much, but it wasn't the actual doing of the cardio. It was getting out of my head. That's what I have as my notes, like pushing past those like plateaus and also pushing past like the prep goggles and getting out of my head because like there were so many times I sent you check-in photos and I was like, how many times did I text you? Like, Ryan, I don't look good. Oh my God, look at last week's. Like, I, I look terrible. I can't get on stage. And it's crazy because now being like, you know, in an average physique, average for me, looking back at how lean I was, I'm like, what was I thinking? Like I had veins in my arms, like an eight pack almost. And I thought I wasn't lean enough. So you just like put on a baggy shirt, man. Don't even look at yourself. Just get in there and do it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't think about whether or not it's working. Just do it. It's working. I swear. I always but I think find peace in your coach. Like, do you trust your coach well enough? Hell yeah. If you have not, to you should work with them. And if you do, if they're happy, then you should be happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, the point of prep that you struggled with is the point that I think a lot of people struggle with. And it's that point where carbs are low, cardio is high. There's probably a good amount of stress that you're under. You're probably not sleeping very well. So the mindset isn't quite there. You're probably flat because you're not eating a lot of carbohydrates, oh, yeah. retaining some water. And you're like, wow, I like, I genuinely don't look good. And it's, and it's somewhat true. Like I was looking at your pictures and I was like, yeah, she probably did look a little bit better last week, but I knew and we knew that the deficit was there, fat was coming off, we were working yep. towards that end goal. I was flat for sure. And that was something that I had to get out of my head with because like I said, I'm five foot three, I'm not by any means like a big person. Um, so I'm already kind of little and petite. And then when you add in an extreme weight loss like that, it, I looked almost like a skeleton or an alien, which you see my stage shots, I look buff and strong. And a lot of people for first timers, you know, they don't realize that you're not going to look good when you're just walking around the gym, you're going to look small and stringy and flat. You know, it's when you get on stage, that's when you really, really shine. Um, so <laughs> especially, especially as a natural. So Miranda is also a natural competitor. Yeah. So, but it's so funny because you would <laughs> throw on like a big t-shirt and you would look like this starved skeleton creature, but then you would post like your check-in pictures where you were like pulling a vacuum and like flexing your Jeez. arms and delts and everyone would be like, oh my God, like lower the dosage, too much drugs. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I'd get like all the comments on my Instagram, like, oh my God, you're so big, you're so strong. And then I'd get people that see me in person and I actually had a couple comments. People would come up to me like very concerned, like, Miranda, are you okay? You look <laughs> ill. And I'm like, I'm fine, okay. And it's crazy too, because I, uh, I actually ha felt like I had a really good prep. Like I felt like it could have been way worse. Like even though I had my moments, I was pretty like high energy all the way throughout. Like I was able to, like I said, to hit PRs and hit my sessions. Um, the only big fights I got in with my husband were about hummus, you know. So I wasn't like extra cranky or moody. Did a couple of yeah, you know, did a couple of dumb things. Like went to my door and I tried to unlock it by hitting the unlock button for my like car beeper and was wondering why my door wasn't opening. So, you know, besides mm. those occasional moments, um, I felt like we were in a really good position and had a great prep. Yeah. So transitioning back to a little bit more about veganism, vegetarianism, I'm sure you hear it from people all the time. The same people who are like, oh my God, you look so muscular. <laughs> What do you what do you say? What's your response when people say like, oh, how do you how do you build muscle if you're not eating meat? Like, how do you how can you possibly build muscle on just plants? Yeah. So I actually get that a lot. I get people asking me. Do you like, just flex? Yeah, like, so it's pictures. I, there's a part of me that and I'm not I'm a nice person. I'm not mean enough to do this. But a part of me wants to just kind of like scoff and be like, yeah, I have no muscle. I, I don't know. <laughs> or, oh, I just eat my lawn. Like be a smart ass. But I also don't want to like be rude or offend anyone, especially if they're genuinely interested and curious. Um, so I just kind of explain. So people have this misconception, especially in our society with the American standard diet, um, that protein and meat are pretty much interchangeable. They're synonymous, which they're not. So protein has meat. 
but pro but protein is not meat, if that makes sense. And you can jump in as well and kind of clarify any points um, if you would like to. But pretty much protein comes from meat, but it also comes from various plant sources as well. And people are not really educated about that in our society. It's funny because up until about, I think, 2011, and again, don't quote me entirely on that, um, the USDA had a, a food pyramid. And if you look at the bottom of the food pyramid, it didn't say protein. It said meat. So people grew up seeing that, you know, we learned about that in school, like you need to eat meat. That's the base of your pyramid pretty much or somewhere down there. Um, and then in 2011, the USDA changed it. They no longer have the food pyramid. They have the my plate. If you guys, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And if you yeah. look, it no longer says meat. It now says protein. They're acknowledging that um, pr protein does not solely come from meat. Um, so I just kind of educate people on the fact that there are various plant sources where you can um, get protein from and plenty of it as well. So quick, quickly, nice. Uh, quick, a quick just kind of like a disclaimer, or like a debriefing here. So when we look at like meat versus plant protein, meat is often called complete protein, where plant protein is called incomplete. When we talk about complete versus incomplete, we're just looking at how many amino acids. Meat mm -hmm. has all of the amino acids, both essential and non-essential. Plants have some sort of mixture, but they're incomplete because they're lacking one of those essential amino acids. But when you take two plant proteins, for example, protein that you get from beans and protein that you get from rice, when you combine those, you get a full amino acid spectrum. We call that complementary proteins. But people don't see that. They see mm -hmm. high quality protein, low quality protein, meat mm -hmm. versus plant. And they think, okay, well, I, I just have to eat the meat. But you can, if you design a smart diet around mm -hmm. plants, you can get those full proteins. So Cam, you work with a couple vegan clients. You had a vegan client win her IFBB pro card this year in, in nice. figure. Um, what were, dragging the butt, dragging the butt. <laughs> Ava, come on. Eat meal over here. <laughs> so <laughs> what are some of the changes that you make to a client's nutrition when they say, hey, I am a vegan or I'm a, I'm a vegetarian? Uh, I mean, really, the, not not a whole lot, to be completely honest with you. Because um, you know how she was breaking down proteins and meats being two different things. Uh, you kind of pretty much look at it you know amino acid profiles build your protein and so look look at it like a puzzle you know you've got all these amino acids which are your pieces you put them all together is it is it a picture of a piece of meat or is it going to be a picture of you know rice beans so whatever it is making up i like uh, that That's and so I, I pretty much i think the only changes i've sometimes had to make were maybe instead of having protein around like 2.4 grams per kilogram body weight, bringing it down near like maybe 2.2 or two, something like that. And I, I just think now in today's day and age, there's just way too much or not too much access, but we have enough access to all different kinds of, you know, modified foods, you know, different varieties of things that, you know, don't contain meat and follow the dietary standards of someone who is vegan but also are adequate in you know, some form of that amino acid profile that we're trying to reach and need to consume to chase goals optimally. So really, I kind of told them like, you know, some coaches won't coach people because they're vegan, which I think is absolutely absurd. Like if I, I would lose a girl who just turned pro, 18 year old kid that he, he, like, they're both just <laughs> right now. And on a surface, if you didn't tell someone they were vegan, you wouldn't even know. Like the training, nothing because <clears throat> Echo switched over and I've noticed nothing. I, the only thing, you know, I told her, I said, hey, if you want to do this vegan thing, like I have an athlete, I got them in connect with one another and they talked about things that made it easier. I was like, if you enjoy it, like go for it. Like, I, I don't care. <laughs> like, does it make you happy? Sure. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, and Ryan, when I started working with you, I wasn't vegan yet. We worked together on and off for about two years prior, and I had, like, you know, a good foundation of muscle mass, but we really did most of the work on my physique on a plant-based diet. That's when we really, you know, started grinding grinding gears. I don't know what I'm going to say there. Yeah, we were definitely grinding. <laughs> Crunching, man. We were just going for it. I, I, think, the only I think the only 
change that I made to your nutrition when you switched over was we went from, I believe it was 1.8 grams per kilogram of protein when you were on animal-based proteins and we switched over to 2.1. So I just... In- I just increased your protein intake by a very small amount. It ended up being like 15 to 20 grams a day just to kind of offset some of that lower lower quality protein intake, increase the bolus or the amount of protein in the diet, and yeah. and we noticed nothing. And, and it would maybe be interesting in like an alternate universe to have you run the prep that we did in, in 2019 eating meat and see what the outcome would be because yeah. I would speculate that that there would be really no difference. I don't think so. And honestly, like too, I think it was easier for me as a person to adhere to the plant-based diet as well. Cause remember even eating meat prior, I struggled to hit my protein. I was having to do the, the oats with the egg whites overnight trick. Remember that? Because I wasn't hitting it. It was hard for me. Like being on a plant-based diet, it's easier for me to eat a lot of the, the plant-based foods. I also side note, I'm kind of a junk food vegan in the sense that I'm okay with processed foods like Beyond Burgers and obviously in moderation, but I also know that there is a type of veganism where it's solely whole foods where they only eat like rice and beans and front lawn um, and they don't have any like processed foods. So I'm, I'm okay with eating some, you know, modified uh, higher protein foods as well, which is not all the time, but that definitely did help. Yeah. yeah. I, and I haven't dug super deep into it either, but in a scenario given that you know you're getting quality amino acid profiles through all of your protein sources i think if there were any issues or disparities between outcome and success from the same controlled group or athlete variables everything like that i don't think that any of these things between someone that consumes meat versus just I guess a vegan diet, I think that would be something that if we saw anything, it would be over an extreme long period of time. I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to be very acute um, Mm -hmm. that you would actually be able to notice anything. Yeah. Cam, you actually, you actually made a pretty good point when you, when you were talking about the, like the widespread availability with the popularity of the vegan diet, as it grows more and more recently, it grew even more with the game changers documentary that movie got millions upon millions of views, spiked popularity of vegan diets through the roof. We've seen more and more, you go to your supermarket, there's an entire section just for vegan options. Um, Are there, Miranda, do you you have any issues with those vegan products? Some of them, in my opinion, tend to run a little bit high in calories. They're a little sneaky. Maybe there are some like sneaky foods or some vegan macro hacks that you used while you were prepping to kind of keep you in the low calorie, but still on track with, with with your vegan diet. Absolutely. So first of all, no matter what kind of diet you have, always read your labels because people like to use buzzwords and especially with the fad of veganism, plant-based diets, people use those as buzzwords to try to market their food as healthy to kind of prey on people that don't know any better, people that are not going to read their labels. So a lot of people, again, think plant-based is synonymous with a healthy diet. But like I said earlier, there's a lot of junk foods like in those freezers you're talking about in the vegan section, um, like for instance, like Guardian or Morningstar, which they do have some good products. but Um, A lot of them are, you know, lower to moderate protein, super high in carbs, super high in fat, super high in calories. Those are not going to be your best picks. Like they have um, chicken nuggets. They have corn dogs. They have like fried chicken. You know, they have all this stuff that looks good. And that's great for people that are trying to transition into a vegan diet and they kind of want to have some of the same foods. Um, But for prep, those are not going to be what you want to go for. Um, So we had a couple of different categories Um, So with vegan foods, since a lot of them are high in either carbs or fat, I did find that there are a handful of products that are not, that are high in one or the other. So like they'll be high carb, have like moderate to high protein and then low fat, or they will be, you know, high fat, moderate to high protein and then low carb. So I was kind of able to play around with that. Um, And then us personally too, for my prep, um, my fat was, I think I don't know, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, a little bit higher than like some people would intake, but I offset that because my carbs would be like a little bit lower. So my overall calories after I hit my protein would kind of be um, diversified between my carbs and my fat, but I would choose to kind of have a little bit of a, um, a higher fat intake. That works for my body though. Um, and I'm able to kind of survive. I feel like when my carbs are a little bit lower and my fat's a little bit higher, I'm able to eat a little bit um, more of the foods I like and I don't really get too tired or fatigued but also, disclaimer, my carbs weren't, you know, that low, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, anecdotally speaking, I, I've seen a lot of women over the course of a contest prep that actually do a lot better by modulating their carbs and the fat the way that you did, having a, keeping your oh, fats cool. a little bit higher and then keeping their carbs a little bit lower. Um, my fiance, Jimbo, she's the same way. She loves eating higher fats, lower carbohydrates. Cool. Yeah. And then recently we put out a, view, a video on the YouTube page about <clears throat> kind of the differences between men and women in their response to training, their response to mm. diets and things like that. And a lot of the research seems to show that women diet better or, or, or they are, have more productive dieting phases when the fat intake is a little bit mm. higher and the carbs are a little bit lower. Why exactly that is, not 100% sure. It seems like women have a little bit more a higher degree of metabolic flexibility towards metabolizing fat, especially in that postprandial period after a meal, they like to oxidize mm. more fat. And during exercise, exercise, they oxidize more fat as well. Um, I'm sure I just butchered that, but go watch that video when I had all that stuff fresh in my mind. Yeah. So, yeah. So like Miranda said, if, if, to get your protein options in, read the labels, read your damn labels. Even if you're not vegan, even if you're just trying to lose a couple pounds, read a label every once in a while. Um, it's funny, I was actually going to ask you, but you did a good job of answering it. Uh, kind of like the vegan products that are like chicken nuggets, corn dogs, but you did a good uh, a job of explaining that's more for the people that are transitioning over. A lot of people say, listen, if you're a vegan, why are you trying to eat stuff that looks like me? Right. It's, it's a good like transition. Not only that, but like corn dogs are good. Okay. Like oh, no. everyone loves a corn dog. How can you not love like processed meat or fake meat covered in bread, battered, fried on a stick. Like that's some good American food right there, you know, but you know, I get to eat it without harming any animals. Still terrible yeah. for me probably because it's high in fat and calories, but Hey, it tastes damn good. Cam, you like corn dogs? Dude, I grew up fat. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I think of corn dogs, I always think of like going to the fair. So yes. Cam, what's your favorite, what's your favorite fair food? Uh, for sure. Funnel cake. For sure. Hell yes. Cake. I was going to say funnel fried cake. dough right. with powdered sugar. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. We're all on the same page here. Team funnel cake for life. Team everything. The only problem that I get when I eat too much funnel cake is that when it leaves my body, it leaves it at high velocities and in liquid format. And speaking of high velocity liquid bowel movements... We're going to kind of finish this little episode off with arguably one of the funniest stories. Like, few things make me laugh because I'm dead on the inside, <laughs> completely dead on the inside, like this did. But Miranda has a great story. Walk us through yeah. the prep poop story. Cool. So first of all, I have no shame. Second of all, <laughs> anyone watching this or listening to this cannot judge me because we are all human. We have all been there. And I just have the balls to talk about it on a podcast that thousands of people will listen to. So anyways, oh, yeah. I got really sick. Like I had mentioned earlier during our second peak week, I had the flu, the stomach bug. We all know what happens when we have the stomach bug. It wasn't coming out from the top. Let's just put it that way. Um, I had sent, you know, a lot of sporadic and panicky texts to Coach Ryan, um, and I had screenshotted them, I think, to share, like, with my husband and just, like, a reminder for myself because they were so funny, right? And I had just intended to look back and laugh. Flash forward a little bit. I got interviewed by 24-Hour Fitness as one of their sponsored athletes for their online magazine, um, and the lady that I had interviewed with had asked me to email her over some photos. So I'm emailing her, like, some photos of, like, you know, stage shots, uh, you know, just some fitness shoots, and, like, all that good stuff. Send it. Don't think anything of it. I go to look back at the message I had sent and realize Right in the middle of all those wonderful photos was the screenshot about the explosive diarrhea and me panicking. <laughs> I emailed that lady back so fast and I was like, ha ha, how funny. You know, speaking of prep in my journey, you know, that's a little bit of a, um, you know, a realistic piece of what happened, but don't post that. Please, like that was for my coach, not like that was an accident. Oh Did my they God, post that it? was first. No, thank Crisis God. averted. Crisis, Crisis averted. averted, yeah. So I think, I think I was still teaching at the university at the time and I was like in the middle of class and my phone just starts buzzing, like buzzing, 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 buzzing. I'm like, who the hell wants to talk to me this bad? And it's Miranda and she's like, I sent the lady the poop texts. I sent her the poop texts. And I'm just dying at my desk and all my students are like, what's going on, what's going on? And I was like, I can't tell you and you don't want to know. So yeah, that kind of stuff does happen in prep. We all poop, let's be adults about it. 
Let's not but be too crazy. It's a great lesson, though. It goes to show, like, you need to be comfortable with your coach. Because think about, like, if we didn't have a good relationship, if I didn't feel comfortable communicating to that, that to you, um, and if I didn't feel secure that you would obviously have a professional response and you'd be able to help and guide me through it, like, I would have kept it a secret that I was very sick, you know, throughout peak week. And that would have been bad, you know? Um, yep. So you have to have a good relationship with your coach. And also, as a coach myself, like, I need my clients to tell me about their bowel movements. Not every day, of course, but, like, if you're not using the bathroom or if you're having issues, like, it's a digestive issue that we need to work through. It's probably, if it's not a flu or a bug, something you're consuming, and that's a whole tangent I'm going on. But talk to your coach. That's my point. For sure texting Paul every time I go to the bathroom. Yeah. Cam, as my grandson, will text me some mornings. He'll be like, Dad! Good poopy today. Oh, oh, that's don't. a good boy. That's a good boy. <laughs> oh, it is a good boy. You give him a treat? Like yeah, a dog? You lie. Good boy. All right. We've talked about poop. That's 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 good. Um, Miranda, leave the people with one piece of advice. Maybe some people that are looking into this, they're vegan or they're getting into their first prep. What would, what would be one piece of advice that you would give those individuals? Um, my biggest advice is don't experiment with new foods like on a prep. Like if you're deciding to go vegan or something like that, take some time beforehand um, and be okay with your body response to try out different foods, different meals. I mean, also don't go balls to the wall too much at once. If you like tacos and you like pasta, maybe try making vegan tacos, vegan pasta, just subbing out like one or two items like vegan sour cream or vegan cheese and then like vegan meat crumbles, things that you're already eating and you like. Just try to kind of stick in that realm and then experiment before a prep, not during. Know how your body responds, know what you like, things like that. Great, great advice. God, wish I could give advice that was that good. I give terrible advice. Cam, what do you want to leave the people with? I don't know what. What am I supposed to say? I don't Go know. Just tell them, tell them that like Jesus loves them or something. Yeah. Throw some, throw something out there. Ryan hates you, and Jesus yeah, loves you. I do. I I, do. Ryan hates you. And Jesus <laughs> loves you. Jesus Words Christ. to live by. Put it on a T-shirt. Miranda, where can the people find you if you they, can. if yeah. they want to maybe look into coaching or anything like that? Yeah. You, with them. <laughs> said or talk about poop experiences <laughs> oh yeah well hey i'm all ears i will not judge anybody i tell you that much um but you can find me on instagram my handle is at fit with miranda f-i-t-w-i-t-h-m-i-r-a-n-d-a um send me a message we can connect cam where can they find you on instagram cameron underscore cheek and that and that, like the cheek you can on find you can find me on Instagram at poly underscore rocket. I love feet pictures. The dirtier, the better. If you've got warts, I'll really love you for it. So send all of those pictures that way and send all of your hate mail to at Thomas underscore Neil. That's T-O-M-A-S underscore Neil. He loves to have long conversations Hate. about, you know, hate. hates. <laughs> He does. He pounds the stakes. But yeah, send all your hate mail there, please. Um, that'll be all for us for today. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and go to giftedperformance.com. Trial out our automated coaching service. That's macros, meal planning, and training. Everything you can need for a successful coaching journey. You know the deal. As always, double peace sign. Stay gifted. Team GP. Thanks. Hey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. <She's> wow. <laughs>